Hi everybody, welcome back. We're in Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 10, right towards the end of the chapter in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the section entitled Time Expressions, section 10.4. Greek has a very slick way of handling these time expressions and I want to explain that to you today. At the same time, there's a couple of things that Jeremy Duff doesn't say or which he, he says but doesn't include a few nuances on and I want to just share those with you as well because that'll be helpful. Let's just think about time expressions generally. In English, when we talk about uh, a time expression, we might want to say a number of different things about that time. We might want to say uh, when something happened, something happened at 11 o'clock. We might want to say how long something lasted. We might want to say it lasted for three hours or somebody was living somewhere for 10 days or six years. And then we might want to say um, that there's a period of time and at, at some point during that time, the, another a particular event happened. So, for example, um, during the day something happened or something of that kind. Now, there are other time expressions we might want to use. We might want to say that something happened after something else, for example. And that can be done in Greek, but that just uses other prepositional phrases and so on. The particular uh, types of time expression that we're talking about here, which I just enumerated to you, use a very slick and easy method in Greek. You simply put the time expression itself in the appropriate case. Question is, what is the appropriate case for each of the different kinds of time expression? And is there any rationale or logic to it? Well, uh, there is some kind of rationale and logic, and I want to try and help you to get to grips with that now. So let's take them not actually in the order in which Duff does it, but in order of the ones which are most intuitive. And we'll start with the dative. The dative. If we're putting a time expression in the dative, we are doing what we normally do when a, uh, fr a prepositional phrase uh, is, has a complement in the dative. That is, we're stressing the location of a thing. You may remember some time ago I produced a, a video just trying to explain a little bit more about how prepositions and prepositional phrases work with the different cases. I'll dig that one up and link to it in the, excuse me, in the description to this video. Dative case prepositions are all about location. So if we have a time expression like Jeremy Duff here has and it's in the dative, let's take this, tear, tear, Mera. Like that. Tehemera in the dative. What we're saying is that the event or whatever it is that's described in this way happened at that location in time. What I've got here, of course, is a timeline. And uh, there, that goes stretches along here, so this is in the past and that's heading off into the future. And these are markers on the timelines. These, this might be Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so this is the whole of Monday. I'm already doing that very sensibly, am I? Let's do it like this. That's Monday, that's Tuesday, that's Wednesday, that's Thursday, and so on and so forth. Well, if I put a time expression in the dative case, then I'm saying it's on that particular day or in that particular day, in much the same way as a prepositional phrase where the complement is in the dative will tend to be about location in space or potentially location in time. So that's the logic for that time expression. Let's look now at what I think of as the next most logical one, which is a time expression that is in the accusative case. And Jeremy Duff gives this example uh, where he says, let's go green again, keep it consistent. Um, let's go here. Dua hair morass. And as he points out, because this is plural, dua meaning two, then the as here is accusative plural, not genitive singular. So this is, whereas this is dative, this is. Uh, Accus sorry, this is accusative plural, not genitive singular. Is that what I said? 
Yeah, so this is accusative plural. Now, when a time expression is put in the accusative case, it indicates how long something takes, how the duration of an event. Now, again, that kind of fits with the logic of how cases work with prepositions, because um, the prepositions that govern a noun in the accusative case tend, especially if they're to do with space, to be about movement towards something. If you're going alongside the sea, you'll be going or movement towards or movement alongside something. You're going alongside the sea if you're in the, um, the para plus the accusative case. And all the um, other prepositions that govern a noun in the accusative, like ace, uh, going in, uh, into, you're heading sort of towards something. For me, it kind of has that uh, sense of being extended in space as you're moving towards something. I don't know whether that works intuitively for you, but in this case, the expression do or hammeras is describing the duration, the, the length of time something takes or the length of time something lasts. And so we translate this, as Duff says, something like for two days. Uh, it's for two days, the, the for indicating how long something takes. The, th the third option then, um, which again feels to me like the least intuitive uh, to grasp, you just got to kind of remember it I think, is if you have a time expression uh, in the genitive case, and here's um, uh, the example that Duff gives, Hes, Her, Maras, because this Tes goes with that, that means that this is genitive singular, because that's genitive singular, so Tes, Her, Maras, and uh, it just means the day, or of the day, but assume it's referring to this day. What it's actually telling you is it's the day during which the event happened. It's not telling you that it lasted for the whole of that day, and neither is it, like with the dative, telling you so much about a point in that day, on that day, it's the time during which the event happened. And we're familiar with this difference in English. I can say um, at 11 o'clock, well that would be using the dative because I'm locating it at a particular point. But if I was going to say during a certain hour, then it's any time within that hour or any time within that day, during that day. Now just one point to note here, and this is the thing that um, Duff uh, uh, kind of sidelines a little bit, but it's worth bearing in mind. In English, we use many different prepositions to uh, describe time expressions, even when we are meaning roughly the same thing. So take the dative example. Um, uh, when Duff is talking about the uh, time expressions in the dative case, he says in a time expression, dative means the time at which an event happens expressed in English by on. Well, yes and no. Because if you want to say that something happens on a certain day, you do say on Wednesday, on Thursday. But what if it's a certain month or a certain time of the day? We say on Wednesday, but we say in January, in 2021, and we say at 11 o'clock. So be careful with that. In English, we don't always use the word on to translate what is meant by the time expression in the dative in Greek. Sometimes we use at, sometimes we use in, and so on and so forth. But the point to try and remember is this. Dative is locative. It's about location, in this case, in time. Accusative is about the duration, the time taken for a particular thing, and maybe it helps just to think like this, genitive is the other one, it's the time during which the event happens. Hope that's kind of helpful, it is slightly odd, and I wish I could come up with a better rationale for this one guys, but it, it, I'm just stuck with it in the same way that you are, but there's only three of them. By the time you've got to this point, you're used to just having to remember some things, maybe this is another one that goes in that rag bag of stuff, you just have to learn. 
Anyway, uh, come back uh, in the next video. We'll do a few more examples at the end of this chapter, chapter 10. Then we'll be ready to crack on to chapter 11. It's very exciting because in chapter 11, we're looking at some uh, different forms of verbs, which are kind of challenge challenging, but they're fun. They're important. They appear all over the New Testament. So they'll really help you when you're reading the New Testament in Greek, which is what you'll be able to do if you give this the time it needs. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week. And we'll have you reading it in no time. Okay, God bless and bye for now.